I'm Patrick, also known as Nova, and I'm here at the Experience Share. And Patrick here is our newest employee, and Patrick also helps out with repairs, so he's going to be Hero's best friend. Um, what are What's one of your favorite game series? Favorite game series, without a question, Pokemon. Pokemon? That's a good yep. pick. Uh, which, which Pokemon game? Do you have a favorite? So if I'd have to choose any one Pokemon game, and could only be that one Pokemon game, it would be either Heart Gold or Soul Silver. That's a, that's a solid pick. That's also got so many Pokemon in it. Too. Oh, and honestly, Platinum is probably a very, very close second to that. Um, and I simply like Heart Gold and Soul Silver more because I'm an OG Pokemon player. So when Gen 2 came out, that was really cool. And so I like the nostalgia and the updated graphics, sprites, and kind of that uh, that that in, or the Super Nintendo kind of aesthetic to all the sprites too. It's awesome. For sure. And do you have a favorite console? Probably be the GameCube, simply because that was like the first console like I had as a kid that I got to have in my room by myself. But my, if, if I'm not going on nostalgia, I'd probably say the Switch. Just because to me it's that, that cool crossover of, of being a much more of a, uh, of a handheld kid and then being able to merge both the console and the handheld together and actually have a really cool experience of like sitting on a, in a train playing like, you know, Call of Duty or something else like that and going, huh, as a kid, I always thought I would wonder if I could do this, but now I actually can. So yeah, I'd have to say the switch. Thanks, Patrick. Thank we will you. see you around. Awesome. So Celeste just put these out. They have different backgrounds. This one has like a cool comic book style background. And then I think we maybe restocked some others. This one has like a space background. This one has a blue background. This one has little icons and stuff on it. Very cool. Uh, people have been pretty excited for these. And then we also got these uh, nano blocks, which they're kind of like mini Legos. We got a bunch of different Pokemon, which I will show you here just in a second. But we have Dragonite. We got little Rowlets and little Snorlaxes. They're very cute. You just gotta be careful you don't lose the uh, pieces because they're really tiny. But they do look really, really cute, all assembled. I'll try to post maybe a picture of them all built so you can see one. All right, so we got a bunch of new graphic novels here. Starting off, we got Spider-Man 2099, Daredevil, Miles Morales, Hulk, Last Ronin. Up here we have a Nintendo World Championship Edition. Then we got a bunch of cool NES. We got Super C, Battletoads, Robocop, Barbers of the World, Death Jr., some Castlevania, some Rampage, some Ninja Gaiden, some Excitebike, We've got Medieval over here, this cool Smash Bros. Uh, OLED Switch, We've got Death Jr., and then we got the big Pit Boy edition. This does have the Pit Boy inside. Um, the app, I think you have to download via like a third party. I don't know if the uh, actual app is still in the store anymore, but it do it should still sync up with Fallout 4 if you want to try to use it. If not, it's still a really cool collector's piece. Fruits Basket, Golden Kamui. We got the Fallout Anthology Mini Nuke, and it. We got Spider Man, Spider Man vs Venom, PSP. PS4 games, and this little copy of Death Jr. Um, first up, we have the Atrorhythm for Final Fantasy. Um, this one is kind of cool. I used to play it a lot when I was very active on my 3DS, but unfortunately my mom didn't really buy me games, so I only had the demo version, but uh, I really like Final Fantasy, so this was kind of cool to pick up. The uh, Final Fantasy Chocobo Tales. It looks very cute. Uh, I have not played it yet, but I am very excited to try it out. Harvest Moon. Um, magical Melody. Recently, I've kind of been very interested in Harvest Moon. Uh, it just looks really cute, and Hiroshi really likes the series. So I've kind of piqued interest. Also, the Harvest Moon cow kind of draws me in. I am on a search for getting the cow plushie. And then we have this, the dog island. I know about the dog, but I've never- I didn't know there was a game, and I know Brittany likes this game. I do very like that game. Yeah, and it showed up out of nowhere. So, grab this. 
Hamtaro DHS at the swap meet. Very random, but it is now part of my growing Hamtaro collection. Uh, it is a Jill Stingray Nendoroid from the game Valhalla, one of my top five games ever. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm kind of into figure collecting, but also not because of how expensive it is and how much space it takes. Uh, but when I find something that's cool and like in a series that I enjoy, I typically like to buy figures from that. This was kind of a gift from Steven, is the Dawn Trail, the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail Collector's Edition. Um, it comes with a statue, which I would pull out, but it is kind of hard to open this box. Um, yeah, it comes with a statue, a leather pouch thing, and then a leather bound notebook that is actually pretty nice. And it also comes with a tapestry of the world of Eorzea. Eorza. I still don't know how to pronounce it, and I've played Final Fantasy XIV for years. Um, but yeah, there's like a tapestry that shows like all the locations in the world, including the ones in Dawn Trail. But um, yeah, look at this really beautiful Yoshitaka Amino art. I think that's also why Steven got it, it was just because of this. Because the art. Yeah. Yeah, those are my pickups. Now we're doing a quick unboxing of the Dawn Trail Collector's Edition. So um, here is the figure. This is Ezio from Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, he's a he's a viper, one of the new classes in Dawn Trail. He uh, lost his swords in battle, and so yeah, he's just like holding air. I'm holding air. I suck. Anyways, the leather bound notebook that I had mentioned very shiny. This is the pouch. The label says it's a pen case, but it looks really big to be a pen case. Those are for big pens. Big square pens. Yeah. Little tapestry. Wow. This is whole world. Final Fantasy 14. It kind of makes me wonder because sometimes they'll show Etrius, which is Earth, I guess. And like when they do show it, like one side of the planet is all blue. So it makes me think like, oh, is this like the other half of the planet? Like it's all the land all on one side. I don't know. We'll never know. Yoshi P, answer my question. Um, but yeah. Call out post to Yoshi P. <laughs> Very beautiful. And that was it. That was everything. So we've been getting a lot of Skylanders in recently, and we had some cool ones to show a while ago, but I have some more cool ones to show you. But I'm going to start with this top row, which I think were regular releases. They're kind of hard to find information on. I'm also not super well versed in Skylanders, but we have this Swap Force triple pack, these Tinies, which they have a regular UPC. So I think they were like regular release, um, but they are very rare as you can see by the price tag to find, I'm assuming just in box, um, as you know, probably a lot of a lot of kids opened them and some of these Skylander sets didn't sell well. This is Bat one, I'm gonna show you guys the prices just in case we got some Skylanders fans. We're looking to check these out. There's this one. Some of these are really cool. There might be like color variations too, just to why they're rare. There's these little water characters. Then we have this little rock guy. And this dragon, which I think this dragon looks so cool. Again, not a Skylanders person myself, but these are probably some of the coolest ones you can grab. Down here though, we have some more special ones. I'm not sure where he's from, but there's this like spring edition one. This is an employee holiday exclusive one. This is another special one that looks like a pinata. He looks kind of cute. Looks kind of silly. Um, there's this elf that comes with like a little case. And then there's this uh, Imaginators pack that comes with a little thingy in the middle and then two little characters. So pretty cool stuff here. And then we have this guy here. And this is a Skylander that somebody actually made and printed themselves. So, as you can see, 
This is a... Looks like it might be flocked. Skylander, and if you look this character up, don't know what his name is, um, you probably won't find him in this color, and that's because this was actually somebody's custom Skylander uh, that they made. Apparently you could make these in some sort of app or program, and they had this little promotion where you could make these cool little Skylanders. So this is a custom one. These are super, super hard to find. I'm assuming just because many people probably held on to them or, you know, if they did make one, they were probably a kid. Um, so yeah, like not many of these custom made ones around. Uh, I don't know how many Skylander fans we have, but like if you guys are big Skylander collectors, these are definitely some, some grails for you. Cool. So what are we working on, Hero? Cool, so we've got an NES here. I've already partially taken it down. So what we're going to do is pop the top off. So what happens with NES is as they get older, let me get my test cartridge down here. So a lot of times if you find that your cartridge, like you pop in your cartridge, you clean it up, you, you know, you put the cartridge in there and it's not reading, it's because of this connector right here. So I have a replacement one somewhere on my messy freaking desk. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I have a couple more screws to take out. So I'm mostly through this repair now. assembly that makes it so your cartridge stays up or down. I'm gonna put that off to the side here. Some people say you can boil these like in water to fix them. To make pasta. To make yeah I love my Nintendo pasta. Yeet. Anyway. Trying to line this here and just try and get everything to fit in. Practically bulletproof, these things will just work for years. And if you're having a game that just isn't running, like swapping these connectors out usually does it. Right here, so you'll notice right when I slid, slid the uh, the board in, it's not going to catch under that lip. You want to make sure it goes under that lip there, or it's not going to work properly. So you see how that lip fits sort of over that ground plane right there? Yeah, you want to make sure it fits like that. So we got that all fit together. Normally use Master Blaster as a test cartridge, but we have no TV back here to hook an NES up to, so this will go back out to the testing area later. So we can pop our test card in there. Nothing secure yet. This is just like a, a, uh, a test really quick. Pop it in there. this sticker now we don't need new pins anymore that's good to go eh. 
Woo! NES. Yeah. Thanks, Hero. Yeah. Uh, this isn't Blaster Master, but go buy Blaster Master. That game is freaking fantastic. I love that game. So it's Monday, and it's a little slow. Hero's over here killing it at Blaster Master. Blaster Master. Steven's having his mind blown. It's actually so ahead for the time. If you haven't played Master Blaster Zero, I would absolutely 200% recommend it. Uh, oh, I died. <laughs> no! I'm sorry I distracted you. I, I, oh, you want to have a seizure? Oh! oh. <laughs> uh, you want to know what's even better? Okay, check this out. This is a gold trick. Uh, oh. Hey. Uh, I can start all over again. Nice. Hello. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> We all went and we saw uh, Princess Mononoke, the Studio Ghibli movie, in theaters. It was showing at, what, Emeryville, Oakland? Yeah, they were, they were doing a bunch of showings. Um, I guess this year, the, the company G-Kids, who has the rights to it in the States, they're doing like a whole bunch of Ghibli movies um, in the theaters. And, yeah, anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is an anniversary. It's pretty cool. And so. um, w there was some that er like aired earlier like this year that we didn't get we to missed. see, but I was like, oh, why don't we just see Princess Mononoke? Um, I'd never seen it. These two had. I had seen it, but I've never seen it in theaters. And I feel yeah. like the theater experience is definitely real cool. Yeah. Um, is it your favorite Ghibli movie? Uh, it's people. really up there. It, it is really up top there. Top three? Definitely. Top three? Yeah, How about you? Yeah, very top. It is probably my first. First, first favorite. Top okay. one, yeah. Wow. So I haven't seen a whole lot of them. The ones, some of them, I did see quite a few, but I need to rewatch them because I was, uh, kind of distracted when I saw most of them but out of the ones I've seen I'd say it's the top three maybe top two uh, but it was it was really good um, I mean I know it was like kind of controversial or shocking I guess back in the day because you know it's not I don't know maybe people just expected that it animated it's gonna be for kids or whatnot I think yeah, it was, you it's know, definitely got some graphic parts in it. yeah yeah there's like literal decapitations like <laughs> lots of them <laughs> and it shows the heads flying off uh, and like other body parts too, arms and legs just getting hacked right off. So it's pretty, pretty graphic. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the animals, there's, you know, things like that. But yeah, I thought it was good. Um, you know, definitely has an environmentalist uh, message to it, which is good. Kind of about whether or not humans and nature can live side by side. You no, know? I, I agree to the same way. I think the story in it is also just very well written and... It's a, definitely a much longer movie than I think a, a lot of his other stuff. So you kind of really have to buckle down and be prepared for some, a lot of dialogue um, during some parts. But uh, towards the end, uh, I think it like really ramps up and it, there's, a, there's a really great climax. Yeah, um, whenever they're talking about, I don't know. To me, to me a, kind of a funny part was they're, they're all hyping up this, uh, this deer god or deer yeah. king or whatever like this whole time like oh my god the deer king the deer god and then when it finally shows him it's like showing him in the woods and you're just like seeing the back of him and then he just like turns around and looks at the camera and it's like this horrible goofy looking monkey face on this deer god that i was expecting he was going to be like glorious and <laughs> resplendent like holy creature and then he just turns around and he's just like yeah, definitely a meme, <laughs> a meme looking face. Yeah, I feel like on first watch, you're like, you're not really like, accepting oh, it. Oh, wow, he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you watch movies in the theater, it's definitely a much different experience. But um, yeah, I want to watch more Ghibli movies in the theaters. Um, there's some ones, I, there's like some Ghibli movies I, I feel like I can miss out on, but especially the ones that I've seen and mean a lot more to me, I gotta watch those. So, Mononoke was awesome. Top two, right? Top one. Top one. Oh, top one. That's it right. might be in my top two. So, as what well. makes it your top one? Aesthetically, I really like it. I like plants and stuff, and the, like Mononoke has a lot of that. Um, really like the soundtrack. Mm, I like very good. the story a lot because I, I really like nature. I don't know. Um, music good. The main villainess. Villainess. I mean, it's, it's interesting because, you know, she also has a, a reason why, I, I'm not trying to spoil the movie too much, but essentially she has her own reasons to why she's doing the things she's doing in the movie. Yeah. And you can disagree with her, but I feel like that's also at times, you can also kind of understand the point she's coming from. And, you know, it, I just felt like all the characters in that, mo like in that movie are really well written. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's a good movie. You should see it. It's I like think two it hours long. It's I worth think, watching. I think we sell it here at the store. Too. 
Yeah, we do sell it here at the store. We do. Pick it up with all the rest of the Ghibli movies. Kiro, are you guys winning? Like every day. Are you winning? No, I'm losing. No. Look, it doesn't even turn on. No. Yeah. Oh. oh. It, it did turn on. <laughs> <laughs> you fixed it. I think it worked. Oh. It's broken, it's broken again. They ask you how you are, you just